This is the sad continuation of an unfortunate series, the Alone in a Hotel with a Beverage series, but we're upgrading to something better than Rolling Rock. So, everyone sort of seems to get that there's something wrong with hookup culture, but uh, people have different um, uh, approaches to explaining what that something wrong is. And uh, most of those cr criticisms aren't wrong. There's sort of different angles on it. There's the religious angle, you know, you're, you're not following your proper um, purpose, telos, which isn't, I guess, necessarily um, religious in nature. Uh, not following God's commands would be the more religious side. Uh, there is, of course, the the emptiness and there's the the sort of uh, economics of attraction and how uh, the vast majority of people get left behind. Um, there's the, the the incentives it creates as far as technology and, uh, and, and so forth goes. Um, but I think a, another frame for talking about what's wrong with hookup culture is um, opens up connections with other things that people don't necessarily um, correlate with with hookup culture. Uh, and this was inspired by a video um, done by uh, one of the most underrated YouTubers I know. Um, so big shout out to Dr. Rander McCam, um, an extraordinary uh, language artist. There's no other way to put it. Um, and his inter very interesting video on um, Terrence McKenna, the OG mushroom guy from the 70s. And I had been sort of ambivalent about mushrooms. I thought, oh, that's kind of interesting. You know, Joe Rogan and his crowd seem to think there's some, some interesting stuff to it. I personally don't think it's as necessary as uh, some of those guys seem to um, believe it is. Terrence McKenna was of the opinion, just to, to give a, a baseline, uh, he was a shamanism guy, and his opinion was that you weren't really doing real shamanism unless you were tripping balls on LSD or psilocybin or some fly amantia or some equivalent hallucinogenic um, drug, ayahuasca being being another popular example, and uh, as I enjoy a different drug. Um, these different what what stood out to me while listening to Terrence McKenna talk with or, or not Terrence McKenna another drug guy talk with Joe Rogan is that these different drugs seem to have different spirits to them and so you can't just group all hallucinogens together and say these are drugs they they um, they open doorways to different experiences. And people who experience these things derive different conclusions and even worldviews from them. And uh, what um, Dr. Rander McCann pointed out that Terence McKenna uh, theorized is that uh, fungi, specifically mushrooms, are the origins of feminism. Kind of a bold claim, but made with pride. You know, not not as a Terence McKenna, of course, is not critical of uh, neither feminism nor mushrooms. Um, he was saying, look, they're so great because they led to this. And the idea is that uh, mushrooms and other similar hallucinogens correlate with a intended to lead towards a um, an orgiastic style of mating rather than the traditional pair bonded. Uh, mode of procreation. And that, of course, in turn leads to less male investment in their societies because they don't know who their children are. There's less uh, attachment, a visceral attachment to the future of your tribe and your city and your civilization. And so it tend, men tend to be less um, viscerally, emotionally and incentivized to participate in the and take an interest in the future of their uh, of their world without that 
And uh, it, it's sort of anyone's guess as to why that is. I think it would be a reasonable guess to say, well, that, that sense of ego death leads to a sort of um, a loss of possessiveness as well. Like, it's not just that child isn't mine, it's that woman isn't mine. Maybe this civilization isn't even really mine. I am just this undifferentiated region of matter that is separated by arbitrary lines that we concoct with language and other hippy dippy trippy things. Um, and uh, we could imagine how that might lead to orgies and, and um, things like, of that nature, especially in a more religious context. But that brings us back to uh, the modern day and to hookup culture. And what is hookup culture doing? Well, it doesn't, it doesn't exactly uh, mystery, uh, like mystify uh, a man's uh, connection to his child inherently, especially with the advent of modern genetic testing. You can, you can, can be a little bit more certain of that, even if you. Unfortunately, can sometimes still end up on the hook. Uh, it's not really a laughing matter, but it's um, you know th there's 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 a little bit more knowledge at work. There, we're we're a um, to borrow a Dan Savageism, a monogamish society. Sort of serial monogamy seems to be the trend for most people, which is not the monogamy of a you know herding tribal uh, society and an honor culture strict monogamy or there are strong consequences the the financial incentives there are are pretty overpowering um but it, but it's not this orgiastic thing either and so what we have in hookup culture as far as the incentives for male investment and this is an interesting frame i'm, I'm curious what you guys might think of this frame uh if you have an idea leave it in the comments below but we have a sort of drawn out, spread out orgy mode. Now, your, uh, your knowledge as a man of your paternity is not so much in question, but your knowledge of whether or not your spouse will be with you is in question because uh, marriage is no longer functionally about ownership. The wife no longer owns the husband, at least theoretically. And the man certainly no longer owns his wife, uh, theoretically or functionally, you know. Um, and so there's, there's uncertainty worked in, not necessarily in the realm of kids, but in the realm of the spouse. But with the individualism that's come along with modernity, our connection to our children has also been um, fractured. You know, there's a good chance they'll go off to a college uh, and learn a completely different worldview than what you were raised with. You you so, might find yourself completely disconnected and alienated from your children. They might move to another state or even another country, uh, marrying some chick who doesn't speak or some man who doesn't even speak your language, for all you know. Um, there's, there, there isn't uh, a, a safe presumption of connection that may have once been there. And so what we have in hookup culture is a, a movement towards a sort of prolonged and disguised orgiastic um, procreative model. Now, there is a sort of Nietzschean argument for uh, that being beneficial in some way. It's... Um, it leads to, a, a, it can lead to, arguably, a, a more eugenic mode of procreation. Because if women are going to sleep with only 20% of the guys, rather than closer to 80% of the guys distributed across the women, um, then only the more genetically fit men are going to be um, procreating. It's a, it's a pretty sociopathic <laughs> argument, uh, but, but it's there. But even, even if you accept that, you know, eugenic in which direction? Is, it, uh, are, is the pattern of 
male selection something that is um you know the the, the model itself uh lends success to a particular kind of guy and it's it's actually not always the sort of guys that uh women want in the long run often guys that men want in the short run um people talk about in, um rk selection models it's sort of a uh, I, I think it's of dubious rigorousness in, in according to most of the sciences but it's um it's a pretty it's a pretty good conceptual model you have species that have very little defensive capabilities like rabbits so they go for quantity and low investment in their offspring because there's not much that a rabbit can do to stop a hawk from snatching a young so they just make more rabbits and invest less than any particular one Conversely, you have species like uh, wolves that are apex predators. They don't really have to worry about being preyed upon, but uh, their genetic success hinges a lot on the quality of their offspring. And so they have a high investment, uh, low quantity strategy, K. So R is rabbits, K is wolves, we could say, uh, having only one child every year, two or three and uh, spending a lot of time with that child raising and so forth. And what you have in the orgiastic uh, model of procreation and relationships is a transition from a, a case-selected model where we are planning for the future, where we are investing in our civilization, in our society, you know, planting the trees in whose shade we will never sit, uh, into a more instinctive um, are selected mode of not just relationships and procreation, but also life in general. Because if you don't have those investments uh, to rely upon and to benefit from in your own life, you have to learn to act with less. And um, without a without a case selected uh, base to build upon, you're going to be um, moving towards. A, a third world status essentially um and there are there are arguably you know benefits to that as well but um people should of course bear the costs of that in mind um so you know had, which came first then might be an interesting question the the, the chicken that is hookup culture or the egg which is the proliferation of uh, drugs or something else entirely. Maybe the proliferation of um, travel and urban centers where we have proximity to hundreds and hundreds of people, thousands of people, thousands more people than would ordinarily fit in our Dunbar um, number uh, tribal level of um, accountability. And familiarity wherein honor and reputation can really thrive people can get away with cheating the commons of uh, classical morality which is that K investment and monogamy uh, and get away with it because they can always move somewhere else or find a new group of friends um, there's there's less cost and so there's a lot of different factors there but I thought that um, you know connecting hookup culture to the orgiastic um, procreative model which is not normal for um, Homo sapiens or, or or hominids in general, sans drugs, um, is uh, I, I I think an interesting and a fruitful way of thinking about it. it might also uh, work in the other direction as far as thinking. Like, does this change how we think about how enjoyable an orgy might be? Um, you know, because all of the the emptiness and the loneliness and the uh, the jealousy and the the feelings of uh, rejection in a an increasingly competitive um, dating market could theoretically apply in some Dionysian orgy as well. You know, I'm I'm not speaking from experience here. We're speaking theoretically, but. Um, you know, it's uh, it's it's something worth considering, um, 
not just in a, a moral level, but at a lifestyle level too, because um, I think our use of, of social media, of diversifying our social connections in general, our use of intoxicating drugs, um, I'm not setting a good model here, uh, might all be more closely related uh, than we think, which should give us hope because it means that if we make small changes in one area of our life, say cutting out pot a little bit more or cutting out alcohol a little bit more, um, might have knock-on effects in other areas of our life and in society as well. Food for thought.